myself R. Amuda, Assistant Professor, Department of Information Technology from Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology. Today we are going to discuss about the topic Carbon Footprint. So before going to discuss about this topic, we can have some introduction regarding green computing. Actually human activity is the main cause of changes in environment which results in green IT. Green IT is the practice of creating and using environmentally sustainable computer resources. The motive behind green IT practice include reducing the use of hazardous materials, maximizing energy efficiency during product life cycle and promoting the biodegradability of unused and outdated products. Today our content is we are going to discuss about the topic what is green computing, carbon footprint, measuring the carbon footprint and green IT strategies. Let us discuss what is green computing. The green computing is otherwise called green technology. The green technology means it is environmentally sustainable to use of computers and other related resources like monitor, printer, storage devices and other communication systems which should be used efficiently and effectively with the possibly minimum or no impact on the environment. So this is called a green computing. So we are going to use our uh, resources which should not uh, do any impact on the environment. This is called a green computing. Next the topic is the carbon footprint. So what is carbon footprint? It is the total amount of greenhouse gases which is produced directly or indirectly from the human activities. So this carbon footprint can be expressed in terms of tons of carbon dioxide that is the how much tons of carbon dioxide is emitted. So we try to utilize the minimization of carbon dioxide. So this is called the carbon footprint. So how to measure the carbon footprint? For measuring the carbon footprint, we had to track the lot of information like various facilities we are having in our organization, the operations, what are the operations we are performing, what type of transportations we are using in the organization and what are the elements we are uh, purchasing for the organization. So these things has to be included for measuring the carbon footprint. And the, what are the steps in measuring the carbon footprint? Totally we have 5 steps in measuring the carbon footprint. So for the first step is to define the boundary of the carbon footprint. How to measure the boundary? So we have to set the boundary. So the, our main objective is to reduce the emission of carbon. So we need to define the boundary. So there are three types of boundary. The first one is the operational control and this operational control will include all the operations we are performing in the organization. And second boundary is financial control. So this include all the financial elements that we are included in the organization. And third one is the equity control. So this include all the elements that our company owns, that is the ownership element. So this will define the boundary for the carbon footprint. Coming for number step 2. This step 2 will decide which emission will be included under scope. The scope refers to the emission type. There are three types of emission. The first one is scope 1 emission, scope 2 emission and scope 3 emission. Scope 1 emission include all the direct emissions from the asset. So it may include the emission from a vehicle or any other on-site activity. And second type is scope 2 emission. This include all the indirect emission. So this will include uh, the emissions that we got from the electricity. And third type is the step 
scope 3 emission under this scope 3 emission it covers all other indirect emissions like waste supply chain emission water and others and and step 3 is we are going to define the carbon footprint period so the carbon footprint period is it is used to it can be measured as an annual period we have to define for how much of period we are going to measure the carbon foot this is our third step and coming for the step number four uh, use a practical approach to collect the annual data so once we defined our boundary the types of emission we have to collect the data for all the elements we are going to measure the carbon emission and the step number four just calculate the footprint after collecting all the annual data we have to calculate the footprint by using the footprint uh, calculator or any carbon conversion factor and the next uh, topic is the need of carbon footprint why we are calculating carbon footprint so the measuring the carbon footprint is uh, nothing this is another way to measure our progress towards going green so once we are trying to going green means it will help to improve our business. So how it will help our business to improve the its efficiency and we can reduce the cost. The company will get a public recognition and we can maintain a good supply chain. It will have a good impact on the customer. So this will lead to a good business environment. And the next one is the benefit. What are the benefits of green IT? So the green IT provides good benefit for our environment by improving energy efficiency and then lowering the emission of greenhouse gases and it provides a good environment by using less harmful materials, encouraging reusing and recycling of the uh, electronic devices. So these are all the benefits to our environment uh, this is the practice of green IT so till now we discussed about the various contents regarding green computing carbon footprint and the benefits of the green IT thank you